Hi guys. In our third example about Lewis structures, we're going to go through a problem that um, I would say it's a medium, uh, medium level problem uh, regarding formal charges and how we could use formal charges to decide which is the perfect structure for a molecule. So formal charges, is, uh, you don't just use it to calculate the charge. We use it to find the most plausible or the most acceptable structure for a molecule. So let's go ahead and start by doing uh, an example here, nitrosyl chloride or NOCl. So you start off first by uh, finding, finding the valence electrons. So you have N has 5, and then you have O, O has 6, and then Cl has 7. So you have a total of, you have 13 over here, and so 18 valence electrons. So we have 18 valence electrons. So what did we say about central atoms? We say that the central atoms are the least negative atoms present in the molecule. Now, of course, O is, the, is one of the most electronegative molecules, or uh, sorry, most electronegative atoms, and it cannot be on um, in the middle remember this those are those are things that you have to remember in the periodic table NOFCL in the periodic table F having the most electronegative than O now for N and CL they both have 3.0 if you look at the table and the values of electronegativity they both have 3.0 so we know that O cannot be in the middle, but what about N and Cl? Which one goes in the middle? Well, those are two probable options. So let's go ahead and write how they would look like. So let's say over here, we put the N in the middle, Cl, and then O on the side. So connect them. Now let's do, we have four electrons used up from the 18. So we have 14 left. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we have this satisfied and Cl satisfied. The N is not satisfied. So what do we do in this case? We give a lone pair. So let's say in this case, we get the lone pair from here. And let's say in another scenario, we get the lone pair from oxygen. So we're going to have two scenarios. So first scenario, then N and then we'll go on Cl. Okay. So in this case, and we have the other case, which I'm going to write here. There you go. So, how do we know which one is more likely to happen? Well, let's calculate the formal charges first. So, if we calculate the formal charges here, formal charge of nitrogen is equal to, so nitrogen has five valence electrons, minus two lone electrons, and then minus three bonds. So that would give you that would give you zero. Now for oxygen. Oxygen has six valence electrons minus six lone electrons, and then you have minus one bond, that would give you negative one. What about the chlorine now? It has seven valence electrons minus four lone electrons and then minus two bonds. That would give you plus one. So, minus 1, plus 1, 0. Let's look at the next scenario. Now, the, the formal charge of N stays the same, stays 0. Formal charge of O, what happens to it? So, 6 valence electrons minus 4 lone electrons minus 2. 
So that would give you a zero formal charge on oxygen. What about the chlorine? Chlorine has seven valence electrons minus one, two, three, four, seven lone electrons and minus one bond. That would give you negative one. So in this case, you would have a negative one on this molecule. Now, let's look if we have the Cl in the middle. So remember, you start filling up those ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, 11, 12, and you have, we, you said we have 14. So uh, 13, 14 over here. So two scenarios as well. First one would be O, C, L, then N. And then the next scenario would be So let's calculate the formal charges for each now. So formal charge of Cl first. So Cl has seven minus two lone electrons minus three bonds. So that would be equal to minus, so that would be equal to plus two. Fc for O, you have six minus four lone electrons minus two. That would give you a zero. Fc for n, that would give that five valence electrons minus six lone electrons minus one. That would give you minus two. If you do the formal charge for this one, Cl would have the same formal charge of plus two. Now, oxygen would have. 6 minus 6 minus 1, that would give you minus 1. And then the Fc for nitrogen would be 5 minus 4 minus 2, and that would be equal to minus 1. So you can see here in this case, we have plus 2 and then minus 2. And then the other case, you would have plus 2, minus 1, and minus 1. So those are the four probable scenarios for our, uh, for our molecule. Which one now is the right one? So remember the three rules. First, the formal charges should be as minimum as possible. So the, uh, the minimum amount of formal charges as possible. Second thing is that Electronegative, uh, electronegative atoms or the most electronegative atoms should have a negative formal charge and the least electronegative atoms should have a positive charge. So over here we could see that O does not have a positive charge to begin with so that fits all the scenarios. But the other scenario that, that doesn't fit here is the fact that you have high formal charges in those two cases compared to this one. So if you put Cl in the middle, you're going to have high formal charges, plus 2, minus 2, plus 2, minus 1, minus 1. So it's not as minimum as it's supposed to be. So right off the bat, we can cancel off those two possibilities. So those two possibilities cannot happen. So now the focus is on those. Remember, the least formal charge. Over here we have 0, minus 1, and plus one. Now over here, there's, uh, there's one slight error in calculating the formal charge. If you look at nitrogen, it has zero, yes. Oxygen has six minus four minus two, that's zero. And then for the Cl, you have seven, six, and one. So that's seven minus, seven ele minus six electrons minus one, 
and that would be equal to 0 and not minus 1. So in this case now, if we look at the, um, if we look at the, uh, at the formula and the for formal charges of those two, we could see that the one with the least formal charges is this one. It has 0, 0, 0 on all the, and all the atoms, unlike this one it has minus 1 and plus 1. So right by looking at this, um, at this formula, you could see that this one is the most, uh, is the, is the most convenient and right answer. So therefore, O double bond N Cl is the right structure based on the form of charges. Let's now do our next example, N2O. So we're going to go through the same procedure. I'm not going to repeat it again. 5 valence electrons for N times 2 plus 6. That gives you 16 valence electrons. Now, N is, um, N is less electronegative than O, so N is going to be in the middle. So it's going to look like this. Now we have two bonds, so that's four electrons out of the 16. We have 12 left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So those ones are satisfied, but the N here is not satisfied. It has four electrons and it needs four more. So in this case, we have three scenarios for this, uh, for this problem. So three scenarios. First, let's say that we get, this N gets one, lone, one double bond from here and one lone pair from here. So it will be like this. So that's scenario one. Let's calculate the formal charges for this scenario. So for this N, let's call it N number one. I don't want you guys to mix those numbers with the formal charge. So let's do the formal charge for this one. So you have 5 minus 4, number of lone electrons, minus 2 for the number of bonds. So that would be minus 1. The formal charge of the other N is 5 minus no lone electrons over here, minus 4 bonds, and that would be plus 1. And then for the oxygen, you have 6 electrons minus 4 lone electrons minus 2. That would give you 0. So minus 1 plus 1, 0. Okay. Now, let's talk about the next scenario. So let's put the next scenario here. Next scenario, let's say, let's say the, um, the N took, uh, took two double bonds from this side. So you add one lone pair here, and you add another one from this side as well. So it would look like this. So it would have a triple bond. One, two, three, oh. So now everybody's satisfied, but let's look at the formal charges. So formal charge of this N is equal to, so you have five minus six minus one. So that would be minus two. Formal charge of the other N is 5 minus 0, no lone electrons, minus 4, and that would be plus 1. Formal charge of oxygen would be equal to 6 minus 2 minus 3, that would be plus 1. Let's look at the third scenario now. So the third scenario is taking the triple bond from N instead of O. 
So in this case, formal charge of n, this n, is equal to 5 minus 2 minus 3, that would be 0. Formal charge of the other n is 5 minus 0 minus 4, that would be plus 1. Formal charge of oxygen is 6 minus 6 minus 1, and that would be minus 1 for this one. So those are the three possible scenarios, just to separate between those two. So first thing, the more formal charges have to be as minimum as possible. If you look at this case over here, you have minus 2 plus 1 plus 1. This is not the minimum that you're supposed to have compared to the other one. So this is cancelled out. Now let's see between this one and this one. So what is the difference between those two? Over here we have minus 1 on the n and we have plus 1 on this n. While over here we have the minus 1 on the oxygen and the plus 1 on the nitrogen. So which ones do you think is right? Well, we know that oxygen is really electronegative. It's actually more electronegative than the N. So what do we have in this case? So over here, we have the 4, and then we have the minus 2, and that's minus 1. So we could see here that the negative charge is on the N. It's more preferable to have the negative charge on the O instead of the N. So which one will be more likely? Number three would be more likely because the negative charge is on the O instead of the N because O is more electronegative. So this is the most likely structure. Now again, guys, we talked about resonance. Resonance is the presence of more than one uh, option for the molecule. So the molecule can be in this, in this situation or in this or in this. So it all depends on how you look at things. If you, if you have double bonds like this, then this would be the shape. Or this, or this. So how do you write such resonance structures? So first write this. You write a double, si double pointed arrow, and then you write the next one. And then a double pointed arrow again, and you write the third one. So this is how you represent resonance structures. You represent all of them. Now, uh, what, uh, uh, what might be a question on a test is that they ask you for the resonance structures and they ask you which one is the most likely to occur, or which one is the most likely observable. Well, the most observable one or the one that is most likely present is the one with the least formal charge, the one that is the most stable. And looking at those, this one would be the, the most stable because the presence, the distribution of the formal charges uh, fits the category of having negative charge at the, most at the most electronegative and the positive charge on the least electronegative.